Hi, this is Dr. Mateki. We're going to go over the graphical solutions to homework number two. So first we'll look at question one, part A. Uh, this question hinges on the fact that Bob has more education than Frank. So that means that he is a more efficient producer of health than Frank. Right? The implication graphically is that Bob's MEC curve, the marginal efficient efficiency of capital curve, will be shifted to the right compared to Frank. So let's go ahead and draw these two MEC curves. So remember the MEC curve is downward sloping, which implies that uh, as we produce more and more H, as the quantity of H is larger, the rate of return to investing in subsequent units of H is diminishing. So let's call the first downward sloping curve MEC F for Frank. Let's draw another one off to the right here. Let's call this MEC B for Bob. So compared to Frank, Bob's MEC curve is out to the right, which means that cost of capital, Bob is going to choose a greater level of health capital than Frank. To see this, let's plot um, particular cost of acquiring health capital on the y-axis. Remember, both of these things we can measure in terms of percentages, so we can think about the y-axis as measuring the cost of capital and also the returns to capital. So there are two costs to acquiring capital. There's the opportunity cost, R, and the rate of depreciation. So the way Bob is going to make the best choice here is to equate the marginal benefits and marginal costs, where the marginal cost of acquiring capital is R plus gamma, and the marginal benefit is given by the MEC curve. So Frank is going to set marginal cost equals marginal benefit and choose HF right here for that same cost of capital. Bob will choose a larger amount of health capital. Let's call it HB. If we think about this a little bit more deeply, uh, there are actually two reasons why Bob's H is larger than Frank's. The first one is because he's more efficient. So the, the education allows him to be a more efficient producer of health for any, so for any cost of capital, it's gonna make more sense for him to produce more. Um, the other reason is, is that these guys are both working the same number of hours, but Bob is more educated, so he is going to make more money in this model. So if Bob makes more money, he has more money to spend on things like medicine, going to the doctor, and these other things that produce health capital. For part B, the ultimate answer is still the same, in that Bob is still going to have a higher level of health capital than Frank. But the reason is just slightly different. The main difference now is that if they're both um, working enough hours to make $50,000 per year, Bob's greater education allows him to produce this or to earn this amount of money in far fewer hours. So now he has extra time to devote to producing H. Now let's look at number one, part C. And I uh, asked you guys to look at the labor-leisure trade-off and see how this might be different for Frank and Bob. So remember the basic story here is that uh, the individual has some time to allocate between working and leisure and has to decide how to uh, spend their time. The more time spent working means less time available for leisure and vice versa. So there's going to be an inverse relationship between TW time spent working and TL time in leisure. Right, so the whole key to this problem is realizing that according to the health production function, more H means fewer sick days and therefore more productive time available. So previously we showed that Bob had a larger H star and so that's gonna lead to Bob having fewer sick days and more productive time available. So what we should show here is a budget constraint for Frank that is closer to the origin So we can show a downward sloping relationship that shows the trade-off between time spent working and time spent in leisure. And let's call this Frank's budget. 
and since Bob has more H and more time available, he can engage in both more time spent working and in leisure. So let's call this Bob's budget. So in other words, because Bob chose to produce more health in uh, previous time periods, he is now able to reap the benefit of that in the form of more time available for being productive, either working or in leisure. I also want to point out that this isn't the only possible outcome in this model. This is the most straightforward one. But you could also imagine a world where Bob spent so much time in school or spent so much time producing health that Bob actually has less time available for work and leisure. So that also is a possibility within this model. If that were the case, then Bob's budget constraint would actually be closer to the origin than Frank's. Now let's look at number two, part A. So if Bob and Frank are the same in every way, they now have the same MEC curve. Right? So now we don't have a separate MEC curve for Bob and Frank. What is different, though, is the opportunity cost. Right? So if Bob really, really likes instant gratification, that means giving up some of his time today to do things like exercise is very costly for him. So we would represent this with a higher opportunity cost, which is R in this model. So let's say Bob's opportunity cost is RB. Let's suppose they have the same depreciation. Let's call Frank's opportunity cost RF. It's less than Bob's. So given that they have the same marginal efficiency of capital, the higher opportunity cost means that Bob is going to choose a lower level of health. We'll call it HB. Now Frank is going to choose HF, which is greater than HB. And let me be clear that there are a number of ways that this problem can ultimately turn out. And it really depends on the preferences that Bob and Frank have. The preferences are illustrated or encapsulated within the utility function. So that ultimately will drive a lot of their choices. But um, we're going to go through and look at uh, probably the most straightforward outcome. But this first part here, the MEC with the lower opportunity cost, this is, you know, we can feel pretty confident that this part is going to be accurate. So I asked you to look at the four graphs of the Grossman model, the four key trade-offs. So the first one was the MEC curve. The second one let's look at is the production function. So remember the production function shows us the relationship between health, H, and TP, which is productive time. Basic idea is we need at least some amount of health, H min, in order to be able to produce anything else. Uh, and then as we become more healthy, we have more productive time available, but each additional unit of health capital that we invest in is going to deliver us diminishing amounts of additional productive time. Right? That's why we see the production function flatten out at the top. So we can plot um, the levels of health that Bob and Frank have over here on the production function. HB will give us the productive time TP, and let's call this Bob's productive time. Frank has more health now in this example, so he's further to the right on the, along the x-axis. Go up to the production function, we see that Frank is now going to have more productive time available. Let's call this TPF. Now let's look at graphs three and four here, the labor leisure trade-off and the production possibilities frontier. Now this is where it could go a couple of ways, but again, let's do this in the most straightforward way possible. Let's assume that Frank, because he's healthier, his uh, level of H is higher. It's gonna have more productive time to spend between working and in leisure. I think on the previous slide I called uh, time spent in leisure TL, but in this model it's actually TZ, so time spent producing the home good, which is like leisure. So if Frank has more time available for both the working and playing, 
right? We'll call this Frank's budget. And closer to the origin will be Bob's budget. Right. The idea being that since he is less healthy, spending more time on the couch, sick, recovering, not being able to do anything, there's less time left over for producing for, for producing um, uh, the home good and for spending in your job. Now, it is possible, however, though, that since Frank has more health, that he spent a lot more time producing health, and so that actually could leave him worse off in terms of the time available for, for working and for leisure. But let's stick with the most straightforward interpretation of what's going on here. And finally, let's look at the production possibility frontier graph. So remember that the PPF and the Grossman model doesn't look like the standard Eco 201 Principles of Microeconomic Production Possibilities Frontier. And that's because health and uh, the home good Z are positively related initially. So in other words, the healthier you are, the more productive time you have available for producing Z. So remember the production possibility frontier uh, reflects how much time and how much um, each individual has in terms of financial resources to produce both of these things. So let's start off by drawing Bob's PPF. So remember, we need to have some minimal amount of health before we can produce any home good. So we'll start here at H min and start drawing the curve in this direction. So this upward sloping curve here indicates that the healthier, healthier we are, the more productive time we have available to work and earn money, produce health, produce Z, so we can get more of both of these things. Your textbook calls this the free lunch zone. Eventually though, we're gonna have to spend so much time producing H if we wanna keep getting more H that we're gonna have to give up some of the home good Z. So this is reflected in the negative slope that we see after this peak point here. All right, so let's call this PPF Bob. Now for Frank, Frank has more health, which allows him to have more productive time. We see that in the production function. This also allows him to have more time to spend producing the home good Z and working to get money that he can use to uh, buy things to make him more healthy and to uh, spend uh, more money on leisure. So Frank is going to have more resources to produce both of these things. So if he has more resources to produce both of these, then Frank's PPF is going to be shifted up and to the right from Bob. Now Frank still needs H min, so we're going to start in the same spot and we're gonna draw it in this fashion here. So we'll call this PPF Frank. And where are these guys gonna produce? Well, HB is gonna fall somewhere to the right of this peak point, right? So we'll just say that perhaps it's right here. Again, preferences utility function is gonna indicate where exactly we end up. And the same for Frank to the right of the peak past the free lunch zone. Let's say that Frank is out here. Right. And so now we have completely traced the effects of um, this difference in opportunity cost through these four graphs. Um, so we see that Frank, as a result of having a lower opportunity cost, has ended up producing more health. We see this in the first graph here. More health leads to more productive time in the second graph. More productive time allows uh, Frank to have more time to allocate to the home good leisure and time spent working. So this also means that Frank ends up having more resources to produce health and home good. So compared to Bob, Frank has more H, but he also has more home good, more leisure in this example as well.